Hello everyone! Recently I've been making a lot of cool videos of recording household objects and turning them to some pretty cool sound effects and I thought it would show my process. I'll show you how to get these sounds to this sound. You're a wizard, Harry. First thing I do is watch the clip multiple times on mute. When doing this, I try to brainstorm ideas while mouthing sounds that I think will fit the aesthetic. Now that we have a decent idea with direction, we can start hitting things. Couches, pillows, carpets, and most fabric items can give you a great low impact sound when hit. Plastic bags have a great high end crackle sound that can complement the bottom end of a couch hit. Once we have all our desired sounds, we can start layering them to make our sound skeleton. With impact sounds like these, pay attention to the transients, especially for explosions. Detail. We can layer all the transients to hit at the same time for a strong impact. Or, we can stagger them for a more thumping explosion. When you're happy with your layered arrangement, we can start applying processing effects. For this sound, we'll be working with EQ, compression, distortion, and reverb. A great place to start with effects is EQ. We can use a basic equalizer to shape our overall sound by cutting or adding frequencies to change the sound's character. For this explosion sound, we're going to want a lot of grit. So to do that, we can go hard on the distortion. These go to 11. Be sure to balance out the output to accommodate the drive. Next, we can turn to our compressor for more volume control as well as reshaping the transients after applying distortion. Once you've set the threshold and ratio parameters, we can then use the attack knob to shape the transient. After applying EQ, distortion, and compression, we can quickly go back to the EQ and automate frequencies to add more movement to the sound. Up till now, all the effects that we've been using are categorized as gain-based effects because they directly affect the loudness of the sound. Effects like reverb, on the other hand, can be classified as time-based effects because they use time delays to achieve the sound. This line represents time. What I've been doing lately is having two sets of reverb, a small and a big one, and blending them accordingly to achieve a clear reverberation as well as a wide one. Now that we've brainstormed, recorded, layered, and processed all our sounds, it's time to see it in action. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please leave a like if you like this video. Cheers. Take it easy, guys.